In today's video, we're going to learn how to use Model View Controller in Node.js in under 10 minutes. Hey guys, it's Kyle from Gravity here. In today's video, we're going to learn how to use the MVC or Model View Controller development pattern in Node.js. Now this is a topic that I find very confusing whenever I started to learn this. I know a lot of other people get confused by this because a lot of tutorials online make it overly complicated and overly technical. So in today's video, we're going to get right into it and look at a real example of how this would be used in a SaaS web application. Um, we're going to keep it super simple so that you can get your head around this in no time at all. So let's start off by asking what is a model view controller. To better understand this, I like to flip it around and we'll look at it in terms of a view controller and a model. And this is basically three primary components that you use to structure your application to make it more efficient, easier to understand. So the easiest part to understand is the view and we can think of the view in terms of the user interface or the part that is presented to the user that the user interacts with. The view will then request information from the server and this is then handled by the controller. So the controller manages all the business logic of the application. The controller will also make requests to the R model and the model basically interacts with the data. In our case, this is gonna be a MySQL database so the model gets the data from the database, sends it back to the controller. The controller may do some more processing um, or additional logic on the data, and then it will send it back to the view. Don't worry if this is confusing for you. Um, we're gonna get straight into an example, and you'll understand that this is actually not too difficult to understand. So the first component is our view. I've, got, I've set up a view here, which is a very simple user interface that is gonna display uh, our user's profile, and this is gonna be the user's name and the user's email address. So this view is actually gonna make an API call uh, to the back end, and then it's gonna request this information. Let's hop over to the back end Node.js application, and let's write some code. So I've set up a very basic API. If you wanna learn a bit more about that, I've got a video, I'll link to it down below, on how to build a REST API in Node.js. And my API basically has two endpoints. I've got a post endpoint to create a user, and I've got a get endpoint to get a user by ID. If you're wondering what this little use function is, if you look at one of my previous videos um, on global error handling in Node.js, um, you'll find out more about how this works. So our API is gonna manage all of the requests. It's the interface between our view and our controller. Once the request comes into the API, it's gonna hand over the control to the controller, and then that's where we're gonna implement our logic. So let's take a little look at the get API endpoint, which is gonna be handled by our user controller get method. So open up my user controller, and all we want to do here is to get the user from the database and send it back to the view. So what I'm gonna do here is just type out some code to get the information directly from the database. What we're doing here is we're using a bad example of how to do this. So we'll look at how to use the model later on, but I'm gonna show you what a lot of people typically do, which is fetch the data inside the controller, and then we'll look at why this is bad. I also want to point out here that I'm using Connects.js to build these queries. So I never work with uh, raw SQL. Um, I find it's a little bit messy, whereas Connects gives me a lot more flexibility to build these queries. And you basically just write them like JavaScript, which is really nice. So what I've done here is I've written a query to go and select some columns from the database based on the ID that we pass through from our view. And then I'm going to send this data back to the view. So if I hop over to my view and refresh the page, boom, there we go. 
we've got the data from the back end and we've, we've sent to the view. So let's go back to the code and look at what's wrong with this approach. At a first glance, you probably look at this and think this is fine. This looks like clean code. It's very simple. It's only three lines of code. Why bother using MVC when I can just uh, when I can just get the data directly within the controller? What would happen then if we wanted to create another endpoint? So let's say we want to this time create a new user. When we create a new user in a web application. The first thing we want to do is check if that user is actually already registered before they create their account twice. So in order to do this, what we need to do is get the user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and we'll paste it down here. This time we're going to get the user by their email address. And hopefully you can now see where we run into the problem. We've got a lot of code repetition here. We're repeating these same three lines of code in two different places. So what we want to do is abstract this database query out of the controller and put it into a model. So what I've done here is created a new file called user and I've added a method called get. And this basically just does the same as what we did there. So we select a bunch of columns and then I've got a conditional um, selection here. So we pass in the ID. Uh, I'm selecting based on the ID. If we pass in the email address. I'm selecting based on the email address. So we can get a user either by their ID or by their email address. And then what I'm going to do is go back to my controller. I'm going to import my model into the controller and the way I structure this in my project is I have a folder called controller inside that I'll have a user controller file and then I have another folder called model and inside that I'll have a corresponding uh, model so in this case we've got user so what I'm going to do now is replace the database query in the controller with the call to the model Okay, so we've simplified it down to one line of code and then I'm going to jump over to my view and refresh it, and just check that it works. Okay, perfect. So what we can then do is copy this line of code and then replace uh, it down here. So this time it's going to be no ID. You may think, okay, I've only saved a couple of lines of code here. What was the point in that? Well, this is a very simple example. Let me show you a real world example of a SaaS application that uses an MVC pattern. Okay, so here's an example from Gravity. Uh, my software is a service web application boilerplate. And by just going into our user controller here and doing a search for user get, you can see that there's eight instances where I have to get the user from the database. So something like getting the user is actually quite a common thing that you're going to do in your application. So you can quickly see here how uh, if we used our first approach where we just fetch the data inside the controller, we'd have a lot of repetition. We'd be repeating the same bunches of the same lines of code over and over again. And then what would happen is if we wanted to change the structure um, of our database, perhaps we add some new columns or we, you know, we remove some columns. We have to go throughout the application, look through all the controller files and then update those queries. So with this approach, because we have our database interaction isolated within the model, all we have to do then is update the model if our database structure changes. And then we don't have to worry about updating all these lines of code uh, within the controller. So we have much more efficient code and we also have, um, we also are reducing the likelihood that something's going to break in our application and we make it much easier to actually maintain and update our code um, by using this development pattern.
Folks, I hope that was useful. Just as a very quick recap, because I know this can be a complicated subject. It's our view is the user interface that the user interacts with. Our controller is all of our business logic. The main logic of the application that handles the requests coming in from the API and sends the response to the view. Our, model then, our models then are objects that interact with the database um, and splitting them out into these three components ensures that we have a very, very clean application structure, reducing the amount of code that's necessary, and we're making our code much, much easier to maintain and more efficient. I hope you find the video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you've got any questions or you've got a suggestion for a video or something you would like me to do a tutorial on, please leave a comment down below. Awesome, thank you very much.